All right, the uh, LT3 and 5 um, really kind of go together nicely. Um, so they are all in, in this one video. We're going to be talking about both graphing an equation from slope-intercept form, um, which you've def definitely seen before. Um, but we're also going to be talking about graphing vertical and horizontal lines, um, which is something you may not be as familiar with. Um, we're going to sl start with slope-intercept form. The slope-intercept form for an equation is y equals mx plus b. And I know that this is something that you've um, seen before. Um, and it's called slope-intercept form because it gives you exactly those two things. It gives you the slope and it gives you the y-intercept. You can find the slope in the equation from this m value. And we've done a few examples in class um, where we've created equations already, and so we've talked about these couple things a little bit. The y-intercept in your equation is given by the b value. Okay, so let's talk about the y-intercept really quick. If I have a line graphed on a standard xy coordinate plane, the y-intercept is this point where the line crosses the y-axis. Okay, And the coordinates of this point are 0, comma, b. And that b just comes from right here. So whatever this b value is, that's the value for the y-coordinate where this line crosses the y-axis. The x-coordinate is always 0. If our line is somewhere down here, crosses down there, the x-coordinate is 0. Uh, if it's up here, the x-coordinate is 0. Okay, And we also talked about that as when x equals 0. And that y-value for the y-intercept is b. Okay, The slope we've talked about quite a bit as well. Um, we probably best know slope as rise over run. I also mentioned a couple times in class that this was, and we took notes on it already once, but the change in y over the change in x values. So if we're looking to graph an equation in slope-intercept form, the first point that we are going to plot on our graph is the y-intercept. Always start with that y-intercept. We've talked about it as the starting point as well, if that helps you to remember it. So whatever this y-intercept is, we'll start by plotting that point. Okay, and we'll just we'll pretend for this example that our y-intercept is right there. Okay, then the slope, um, whatever the slope is, we will rise and rise over run and use that to plot the next point. So if our slope is like three over two, we'll go up one, two, three over 2. Okay, if it's if it's negative 1 third, we'll go down 1 over 3. Okay, so whatever the rise is, do that part first. Whatever the run is, do that part second. And that gives our next point. Once you've got two points, um, you can connect them with a straight line. I usually recommend um, making more than just two points, um, but technically two is all you really need. Um, so that is sort of a, a quick run through, and in a minute we'll see some more examples of how to graph a slope-intercept line. But we've also got these special cases where we've got y equals something, a number, or x equals some number. All right, and so how you graph those is actually fairly straightforward. To graph y equals 4, we're just going to go up on the y-axis to 4, plot that point as if it were just a y-intercept. And this, what this really means is all values where y is 4. So this point right here has a y-coordinate of 4. This point right here has a y-coordinate of 4. This one has a y-coordinate of 4. This one has a y-coordinate of 4. So any point with a y-coordinate of 4 is on that line. 
And so when we, when we graph a line like this, it makes a straight line horizontally. Um, similar when we're talking about an x equals line, we're going to go to where, in this case, x is negative 2. There's where x is negative 2. x is also negative 2 right there. The x coordinate is negative 2 right there. The x coordinate is negative 2 right there. The x coordinate is negative 2 right there. So an x equals line goes straight up and down. It's straight vertical line. All right. So I know that was um, very general and you may be feeling confused. Hopefully these next examples um, will help you with this. Okay. Um, so we've got five equations over here. Um, the first one, y equals one half x plus two. So the first thing I'm going to look for is the y-intercept, which in this case is two. That's the first point that I'm going to draw on the graph. From there, use the slope, which is 1 over 2. So I'm going to rise 1, run 2, up 1 over 1, 2, up 1 over 2, rise 1, run 2. You can also work backwards, so you can kind of see the pattern these dots are making. You can kind of work backwards and go down 1, left 2. And the last part is just to connect these with a straight line. In the next one, we have first look for the y-intercept, which in this case is negative 4. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, make my y-intercept. And then I have a slope of 3, which as a fraction is just 3 over 1. So I'm going to rise over run, so rise 1, 2, 3, run 1. Rise, one, two, three, run one. Rise, one, two, three, run one. And again, just connect that with a straight line. In my next one, again, look for the y-intercept. I have a y-intercept of positive five. One, two, three, four, five. I have a slope of negative 3 over 4, so that's negative 3 rise over 4 run. A rise of negative 3 means this line is going down 3, so 1, 2, 3. It's rising negative 3, that means it's going down 3, and the run is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. When you do the run, always go to the right. No matter what, always go to the right for the run. The rise will change depending on if it is negative or positive, but the run always goes to the right. Okay. In the next example, if we were going to look for a, a y-intercept, it would be here, right? But there isn't one. So really, you can replace this with a plus zero if you want, if that helps you. And if we have a plus zero there, that just means we start uh, y-intercept at zero. Okay, and then I have a negative five slope, so I'm going to write that as negative five over one. I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, five over one. And I'm going to kind of work backwards just to make another point too. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five, and over one as well. And that's what my line looks like. The last one um, is a y equals 6 line. Okay, So if you were to think about this just as, a, as a, like an equation like one of these, you'd be looking at, OK, I have a y-intercept of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, did I make this line wrong? Yeah, shoot, I did. Uh, this one, I, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Just kidding. It's all good in the hood. Y equals 6 right here. So we got a y-intercept of 6. And again, this is any point with a y-coordinate of 6. So this is a straight horizontal line. OK. 
Okay. I went through that fairly quickly. Um, I'm guessing that there will be questions about this. Um, we will also do a lot more examples with this. So if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, please respond in the questions form. Um, and even if it's just, hey, could we just go over the examples again? Or, hey, I think I get it, but I just need more practice. Okay, Whatever you feel like I need to know, whether that's a specific question or just a general like, hey, I'm not so great with this, let's work on it a lot. Um, anything, any feedback is good for me to know. So please, please, please use that form if you feel like you need to. Um, for your before class, um, I'd like you to create four equations. You can write your four equations here. They can be slope-intercept form, or they can be one of those special cases. But try to try to kind of be creative with it. Like, don't just give me y equals two x plus one, y equals three x plus one, y equals four x plus one, y equals five x plus one. Okay. Give yourself a little bit of a variety. So maybe some negatives, maybe some fraction slopes. Um, some different y-intercepts, maybe a special case, um, something like that. Okay. Once you've got your four equations, graph them here and leave this blank. Okay. We're going to do a thing with this in class. So leave this one blank, graph all of your lines on this coordinate right here. 